Well, Brendan Rice, many know him because of his father, but we followed him at USC, and I'm not sure I can recall a receiver making a bigger leap uh, from his junior year to his senior year, and he is joining us. I saw him in the hallway during the break, and I said, I knew you were a worker. Your dad had a legendary work ethic. Michael Pittman, another Trojan, legendary work ethic. And so there was a time as a junior, I didn't know if you were an NFL player, and all of a sudden I watched last year and I'm like, oh no, you're going to go, you're going to go closer to the front than the back of the draft. Is some of that just your dad in your ear for years? Cause you, Jerry was known as the hardest working <laughs> receiver in the league. Was a lot of that from dad down? Um, I would have to say that my work ethic was always there. And even coach Riley sp spoke highly on just what I did in practice. And as well as the weight room, it was just going ahead and staying composed within the moment and not letting the moment get too big. And my dad preached that for the longest time to me because he saw the work I was putting in day in and day out. Now it was time to go out there and just transition it onto the field as well as staying composed. So you're a physical receiver, but the speed to beat people as you see over the top, what do you look at and think I've, yeah, those are nice highlights. So you're obviously beating man coverage here and that you yards after the catch. <laughs> you're a physical dude. You're physical you're carrying linebackers. What do you look at and think I've got to get better at something? Oh uh, yeah. I have to get better at yards after the catch. I have the burners and speed to go ahead and reach top speed, but how can I get there the quickest way? And how can I, it's pretty much angle positions, footing, that type of stuff, drop stepping it vertical and just being aware of my surroundings. So you have your pro day tomorrow you went to the combine. Um, did you get feelers? Are there teams that you kind of walk out of there and think, man, they really were interested? I wouldn't. I would like to go ahead and say a couple teams, but it's never the teams that you would think end up drafting you. It's the ones that are kind of sleepers, and I don't want to, you know, put bad juju out there. Just you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, let me ask you about um, Caleb. It's very obvious. You you probably figured it out very quickly uh, working with him. This is special. But he is a player that can go off script and likes to move. I'd argue he's almost as comfortable out of the pocket than in it. Does that make it easier, harder? Like early on, first year with him, was it an adjustment with that kind of athlete at quarterback? Well, Colin, uh, my first year with him, just being in the environment and being in the going to war with him, it was kind of crazy because I didn't know how to work with him. I had to get adjusted and just an off timing quarterback, but likes to be on timing as well. Cause if you're not doing certain things or if you're doing too much at the top of the route, he's going to get on you about it, but shoot, he might roll out the pocket. Now you're trying to go run with him. And I'm like, it's, it's confusing. But once we built that chemistry and I got to know him more and more and started thinking like him, that's when you see the production from the second year and it just grows and grows and grows. Yeah. Um, did you feel he was accurate? Oh, crazy accurate, man. Just go look at the tape. Yeah. Heck yeah. Is he, was he easy to communicate with? Was uh, it something, because he came in kind of as a star, and you're obviously the son of a legend. Was it a weird dynamic early? Uh, I would have to say, yeah, it was kind of weird because he's a different type of cat. But one thing you can respect at all times is his work ethic and who he is as a person. He's going to come in each and every day and put his best foot forward. So I could actually follow somebody who's going to lead in that to that example but I would have to say, like, working with him wise, we, we got the hang of it, man. We got the hang of it. Yeah. So do you feel, you know, Brawny goes to USC. Your dad's a legend. What are the advantages of that? Dad being Jerry Rice. Is there an advantage to it? I mean, shoot, I came from Boulder, Colorado. So when I came from Boulder and I looked at USC, I said, there's such a long list of prominent and dominant guys here and you just see all the last names and all the legends and I know that I'm going to fit right in and nobody's really going to look at me twice whereas in Boulder you know it's a big deal <laughs> you, you were a big deal when you went there yeah yeah the Mel Tucker stuff um do you know Bronny by the way have you met him yes I have met Bronny what is it like for him on that campus uh, I've I can only imagine it's hectic for him yeah, and just being the son of LeBron James, especially that LeBron James is still in the league and still, I would say, he's prime and dominant as ever. I don't know about you, but that's my goat. Yeah, uh, I would have to say, like, yeah, it's, it can be hard at times. Yeah, do you guys talk about that? Is that like a discussion you can kind of relate? Uh, there's a lot of guys with the same last name as me, like Sharif uh, O'Neal and his little brother, and you got to go ahead and take it as a blessing because. 
our fathers were able to go ahead and create a, a legacy and pave the way for us. So now it's all up to us about our work ethic and how we handle it. So this year was viewed as disappointing by USC and Lincoln Riley, obviously a smart guy. Um, did you see the stress because it didn't go as planned? Could you sense that things weren't going well? Was it was it on his face week to week? Uh, I would have to say no matter what, he kept he kept it composed. He said, guys, we're going to go back to work and we're going to dominate this next game. He didn't care about what happened in previous game. Like, I think it turned to just bad after the Utah game. Yeah. We lost on that last second field goal. And you see, like, so many few mistakes, but, you know, they're game-changing mistakes. So you have to go ahead and look at it as how can we minimalize those mistakes so we don't make it happen next week. And it just, hey, things happen, and we just went down. How is Lincoln as a coach offensively? As you walk into a program. Is it complicated? Um, is it, does it ask you to do multiple things? Did he assess you very quickly? Tell me about Lincoln's coaching and your relationship. He's going to build your football IQ and who you are as a person. He's going to ask a lot of you. But same thing with all college coaches, man. But the person that I really liked or who I looked up to was Dennis Simmons. That's the reason I wanted to go to. receiver her. coach. Yes, he had Marquise Lee, uh, Michael Crabtree, CeeDee Lamb. And I wanted to go ahead and be a part of that just because of who he was to his kids, to his wife, and as well as who he was on the field as a coach. Yeah. Is um, Lincoln during a game, he's play calling. Is, is, does he, how is he as a play caller? Like, could you kind of predict what's coming or was he unpredictable? Uh, we had a short list of first and ten, second and fives, third and fives, third and longs. And you could basically tell, like, I could, if you gave me a situation, I could probably tell the play right now. Yeah. So you had a very, very good uh, final year at USC. And is there, when you look at yourself in the combine in your pro day, like your pro day tomorrow, what are you trying? It's in shorts, right? You're, you're working with familiar quarterback. Is Miller Moss, for instance, throwing to you? Who's throwing to you tomorrow? Uh, Caleb Williams. Oh, Caleb's yeah. going to throw for you. Heck yeah. Okay, that's great. <laughs> okay, so um, do you know exactly what you're doing? What are you trying to get out of your pro day tomorrow? Uh, I'm trying to go ahead and compete. And whatever people would like me to go out there to do, I'm going to go out there and do it. A couple drills, a couple routes. Uh, we'll do a little bit of Elta shuttle and the L drill three cone and just try to put my best foot forward, man. Who do you view your game to be after? Who, compare it to somebody in the league, maybe a former Trojan, maybe not. I, I hate comparing, uh, but I would have to say uh, I like the dominance of Keenan. I like the dominance of DK, a little bit of uh, Mike Evans, those type of guys. Well, you're a physical receiver. For sure. So when we showed those uh, highlights initially with Brendan, <laughs> um, you think you have to work after the catch, but I think one of the issues, you're a faster version of Puka Nakua, but Puka's just big. And you found, when I watch these videos, I look at you as somebody that takes pride in not being tackled. Oh, yeah, you can't be tackled by the first man. Always have to make the first man miss. Uh, most of my issues came from the second man, and... Honestly, a lot of my tape, I had a bad ball security, which I have to go ahead and clean up. What What is that? Why is that? Uh, I felt as though, you know, you get past the first man, okay, I'm trying to break out. You be really a little bit too eager, but the second guy's coming and trying to punch that ball out. Yeah. Brendan Rice joining us. Played all four seasons, two at Colorado, two at USC, 45 catches, 12 touchdowns. You know, the transfer portal really benefited you. But I think it can be problematic. And a lot of times when coaches complain about it, they sound like old guys. You know, the kids, all they care about is money. So Jordan Addison obviously came. It was publicized. He got some lettuce. Take me through, do players now mostly care just about the dough? I mean, take me through the transfer portal. Do you like it? Are you concerned about it? How do you view it as a star player? I'm very concerned, but I'm thankful that some guys get some opportunities to go and play at other places just as well as coaches get to, you know, just jump around. Uh, and the portal for me, it wasn't all about money. I got offered some couple million dollars just incentives and stuff like that. Right. And I came to USC because I wanted to play with Caleb. I wanted to be with Lincoln Riley. I wanted to learn from Dennis Simmons. I wanted to build off my football IQ. And I wanted to be a part of the long list of Trojan receivers to wear number two, as well as just be within the Trojan alumni and stuff like that.
Yeah. Are there guys, I mean, listen, it, a lot of it is you, you grew up with a, with a dad that was affluent and had money. Did you feel like you didn't necessarily, that wasn't the primary goal for you? It wasn't a necessity? Uh, I'm always, I don't know if it was nothing. No, nah, it was definitely a necessity. Let me say that. <laughs> um, shoot, my dad is a farm boy from Mississippi. He He's very stingy with what he has, but <laughs> I am thankful for everything that he does for me. But yeah, so you're going to go ahead and look at it that way. But I was looking at it 20 years down the line. I'm going to have a USC degree. I'm going to be in the league. I'm going to be better off. And you can't look at the short-term goals. Are you, um, you know, it's amazing. You're at USC. You're, you're getting ready for your pro day. Do you have a guess? I mean, there's, you obviously size yourself up. You don't like to compare. If I said third round, does that feel right to you? No. <laughs> Second round? Yes. I would hope. <laughs> Shoot, I would like to be a first rounder. But... It's by the grace of God, and God has uh, my own path set for me, and I just hope that I'm following it and just staying online with it. You know, it is, I, I was thinking, it, it, when you, when did you realize, obviously you're a great player, but when did you realize, six, seven, eight, nine years old, that, you know, just because your dad plays football doesn't mean you're going to. Your dad could be a boxer. You don't want to box. When did you know, man, this football thing is fun? Uh, I started off playing tackle football. Uh, when I was about five, six years old, and I was running into the end zone doing flips and all that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was one of them kids, just kind of crazy knucklehead. I uh, used to play every position on the field. I even played lineman for a little bit. I was going to say, you were a bigger kid probably. Did you ever do the defensive stuff? Oh, yeah, I was on the defensive line, linebacker, all that type of stuff. But you went receiver? Yes, sir. Was it an easy tr- – was, was receiver easy for you? It was – it was easy for me because I played so many positions and I was able to learn, okay, now I'm a lineman, learned how to block, running back, okay, learn how to shorten up my stride so I can make certain juke moves and stuff like that, uh, safeties and corners. Now I get to see what the defense is looking at and all those perspectives go into my game as a receiver. So you're a big film guy and you told me most of your friends in football are guys that are committed like you and do film. Um, give me an example. You're watching my film. I'm an Oregon DB. Are you looking for tells? Are, like one of the moves we showed, he, he bit on an outside step and you went in. When you look at film, what, are you looking for like the poker player? You're looking for tells? Oh, yeah, I'm looking definitely for tells. Uh, how does he line up versus man, cover three quarters, cover six rats, anything like that. And I'm looking if you see if he's flat-footed, he's going to jump press me. Um, does he like to open his hip? Does he like the shadow technique? Stuff the, stuff like that is the little things that will go ahead and separate you as a receiver. Yeah. Are you a trash talker at all? <sighs> only, when, only when it's talked to me. <laughs> but I like to respond with my play, and then I might give you a little something. Yeah, trash talker over here. Oh, crap. This guy. <laughs> he did, you, never the end of it. Hey, it's great meeting you. Say hello to your father. 6'2", 215. Are you at the weight? You want to be for the NFL. 215 now is a physical receiver. I'm 210 right now. Um, I'm at the perfect weight. I'm going to stay between a 208 to 212 range, and I feel as though that I'm the most uh, just ready to go at that weight. What do you run your – I don't – I don't care much about 40 times. I think it's mostly first step acceleration. Some guys play fast in pads. Mm -hmm. You play very fast to me in pads. What do you run? Uh, I would have to say, what do I run? What do like you like Puka. Up? Puka didn't burn up at the 40, mm -hmm. but when you watch him, nobody catches it. Exactly. Uh, I would have to say, like, if you go off the GPS, I hit. I was third at the combine. I ran 23.7 miles per hour. And I talked to a couple coaches, and they were like, hey, man, like, you don't have to run a 40 again. Like, you, you, we see who you are, and you're a top-end burner guy. And you go ahead and be a deep threat and cause a uh, defensive stretch. What's your favorite play? Is it getting a bubble screen and breaking tackles? Is it over the top? Like, if I said to you, the because I'm watching some of these highlights, and you're just bowling over people, and I think, oh, this, you love this. Is there a play that you dream of that you is it shows your, your talent? I would have to say... Caleb just goes ahead and goes up to the line of scrimmage and he just checks me to a post. And he checks me to that post. I get to go ahead and stem him, uh, lean him to the left a little bit, and then cross him up. And then he has to spin out, man, beat over top, catch it, touchdown. Had a few of those. Had a few of those. You did. Great meeting you. Good luck to you. You as well. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching.
Thanks again for making us part of your day.